Hey everybody, I'm Evan Hammonds for Bloodhorse.com and welcome to the pre-Belmont edition of After the Wire, where we have a few odds and ends to uh, zip through before we can focus all of our attention on the goings-on at Elmont, New York, or at least for the next weekend, it'll be the horse capital of the world. Now, most would find a four-horse field unappetizing from a wagering standpoint and unappealing from a viewing standpoint, but I'll admit I was enthralled by viewing Game on Dude Saturday night in the Grade 2 Californian Stakes from Bedfair Hollywood Park. Making his first run since a disappointing 12th place finish in the desert in Dubai, Game on Dude went right for the lead in the Californian and had an easy run of it under Chantal Sutherland, getting an opening half in 48 and 1. Now after we saw the half mile split, we figured he should win pretty, pretty easily from there and he did. But it was the way he did it that was, that was so fantastic. Now he threw down back-to-back -back quarters of 23 and 4 and 23 and 2 while stretching his lead from a length and a half to sixth by the time we hit the eighth pole. Now personally, I thought he was the best older horse in training last year, and I think he's the best older horse in training this year. And he gets a big leg up with the big finale, the Breeders' Cup Classic, being held in his own backyard at Santa Anita this year, where he's already won the big cap and Goodwood last year and the San Antonio this year. Next up for the big fella is the Hollywood Gold Cup. Now at Churchill Downs on Saturday night they had a trio of graded stakes where I was impressed uh, first by Rothko in the Aristides and second by Busy Caroline in the Early Times Mint Julep. Padua Stables Rothko put together a nice three race win streak last summer before running into the Factor in Southern California during the winter uh, both races were at seven furlongs, and he got beat by him both times in the Malibu and San Carlos. Now, under the Twin Spires, Rothko cut back to six furlongs, and sitting off a hot pace along the rail, Corey Nakatani swung Rothko out on the turn, and they blew by the leaders coming out of the bend. Now, while, what it, while it wasn't exactly a world-class field of sprinters, it was the way he did it and the way he looked may help him return to grade one company soon. He's also a nice, uh, has a nice pedigree. His dam, Raspberry Egg Cream, is a half-sister to the good graded stakes winner, Kazoo. Also, he's probably gonna go in the Iowa Sprint next, and then for the, uh, the Alfred Vanderbilt at Saratoga. In the Mint Julep, Busy Caroline rallied stoutly to Pip, Heavenly Landing on the line, after a mile and a 16th and 143 and one. The winner, Catesby Clay's homebred filly, closed in six flat, or maybe a shade under, in order to get the win under Manny Cruz. The win was also trainer Ken McPeak's 300th career win under the Twin Spires. Now McPeak wasn't on hand at Churchill Downs Saturday night. He was up in New York to supervise both uh, Anti-Gun and Unstoppable U on the track the following morning in Belmont Park, where both three-year-olds will try to stop. I'll have another's bid for the Triple Crown. Six, count them six, worked on Sunday morning six days before the test of the champion. Three of them look to be standouts. Dullahan, the third place finisher in the Derby, went a half mile in a bullet 45.97. Wow! Trainer Dale Romans noted the quick workout the Colt had before winning the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes in April, and he said when he works like that, he runs big. Also, when he got back to the barn, Romans noted the Colt recovered quickly. Ahmed Zayat couldn't beat I'll Have Another with Bodie Meister in either the Derby or the Prignus, and will now send out the lightly raced but quickly advancing painter. He went seven furlongs in 127. Assistant trainer Jim Barnes said, I saw what I needed to see. Now painter will be making just his fifth career start in the Belmont, but we have to remember that only in his only second start, the son of Awesome Again was beaten less than four lengths by I'll Have Another in the nine furlong Santa Anita Derby. Union Rags didn't work at Belmont Park, but did work at his base at Fair Hills Training Center and went five furlongs in 59 flat, so he appears to be sitting on ready. All Belmont horses will be together this year, starting Wednesday in, quote, the Stakes Barn, unquote, which is part of a hastily cobbled together security plan by the New York State Racing and Wagering Board. The rules, apparently made up as they go along, won't do the horses any favor by taking them out of their daily routine before being asked to run the biggest race of their young lives at 12 furlongs, but they do apply to everybody. Let's hope they all settle in 
so we can settle back and watch history be made. Now the old saying goes, there's no cheering in the press box, but I'll be rooting for all, I'll have another to become the 12th winner of the Triple Crown. We'll break down the Belmont next time here on After the Wire. Thanks for watching bloodhorse.com.